Hello everyone, I'm Greg Weaver. Welcome to The Audio Analyst. Pardon me. Happy Mother's Day. Coincident with this holiday to honor all moms all over the world, today also marks the second anniversary of the channel. I can't thank you all enough for your support. Now, today I'm going to recap my Fav Five from Exponent 2022, my choices of the five best sounding rooms at that amazing show. Now, to be fair, I did not get into every room. It just isn't possible with most any show, and especially with one this large. To both save time and not to confuse or misstate any equipment pricing in this five-room wrap-up, I'm omitting the pricing from the individual components here. All pricing and even greater in-depth detail may be found in my printed show report at enjoythemusic.com. Uh, and I've shared specific links for each room discussed in today's description section. With that in mind, let's begin. Coming in at number five was Suite 1521, where I found the now routine and remarkably synergistic pairing of the products from speaker designer Jeff Joseph with Valve Electronics guru Nick Doshi. Analog playback was transcribed by the J. Sikora Standard Max turntable, mounted with two of the J. Sikora KV12 VTA pickup arms one fitted with a Lyra Aetna SL cartridge, the second with a Benz LPS. Both carts fed Nick Doshi's Audio Evolution Phono Stage. The rest of the electronics were also members of the Doshi Audio Evolution line, including the Evolution preamp and a pair of the Evolution monoblocks. Jeff Joseph was showing his beautiful looking and marvelous sounding Joseph Audio Pearl Graphene loudspeakers and all cabling was Cardis Audio Clear Beyond Series throughout. Now, this is the only room in the tower area of the hotel that made my short list, but these guys really deserve this recognition. There was no doubt about this system's remarkable dynamic expressiveness right from the first needle drop. The system revealed microdynamic shading, color, and nuance that was to die for. And as a more conventional dynamic driver box enclosure type system, they pulled a near total vanishing act, leaving only the music especially notable when tracking LPs with the Lyra Aetna SL cartridge. When Nick queued up I'm So Lonesome I Could Cry from the Cowboy Junkies Trinity Sessions, Margot's voice was manifest in the room, dripping with texture, rich with authentic tonality and dimensionality. Her voice was so immediate, you felt as if you could reach out and touch her. With Sweet Mercy from the 1999 Blue Note Eric Truffaut's release, uh, Bending New Corners, the decay of the overtones from his trumpet simply trailed on and on. The system offered an engaging liquidity uh, and presented with a, a sense of speed that really worked to shore up its pace, rhythm, and drive. Yeah. This was the real deal. Coming in at number four, I freely admit to having a weak spot for Burmester Audio Systems of Germany. And as I had not seen a Burmester exhibit in the US for some years now, this room represented a perfect example of why many industry members refer to this gear as audio jewelry. As I entered Schomburg A, the Burmester 175 turntable was playing fitted with their Burmester arm and cartridge, its built-in phono stage and external power supply. Now, I also got to hear the Burmester 111 media server, their streamer, transport, DAC, and preamp all rolled into one. And while the absurdly versatile and beautiful Burmester 808 preamp was configured with its standard power supply, I was really stunned by the massive end table sized Burmester 159 mono amplifiers Class AB monsters weighing in at 400 pounds each and making their North American debut. The Burmester BC-150 loudspeakers with Apple wood appointments completed this exemplary system. Uh, using a solid aluminum frame, 
they employ a large 12.5 inch side firing long stroke woofer, a new mid range that makes use of an oval shaped voice coil, and two air motion transformer tweeters, one larger front mounted and a second slightly shorter version mounted at the top of the rear of the enclosure to help tailor the speaker's spatial depth. Now, if you dig such attention to design and execution and want to luxuriate in your sound, you will have found a serious match with the Burmester gear. This system offered such delicately rendered detail, was seductively open and natural, and developed a tremendously authentic perception of body and bloom. I was struck by how readily and faithfully this system could differentiate and present the sound of a vocalist's different voices, especially that of the chest voice. Now, other systems can make me close my eyes and almost convince me that I'm listening to a live event, but few can look as good doing so. Next, number three. I was admittedly anxious to hear the setup in Suite 627 knowing that there were going to be two world premieres, both the new Summit loudspeaker, the flagship of the new entry-level YG Acoustic loudspeakers, the Peaks series, and the first ever public showing of the new Kronos Discovery RS tone arm, the arm that I reviewed last month here on the channel in episode 69. Now, I'm quite familiar with much of the gear that was playing in this room, as I either own or have reviewed many of these components. LP transcription was done by the award-winning Superlative Kronos Pro Turntable, powered by its Super Capacitor Power Supply 1, sporting the brand new Discovery RS Tone Arm, and fitted with a MySonic Lab Platinum Signature Moving Coil Cartridge. Now, while I use a flagship Etsuro Gold MC cartridge instead, the rest of this analog front end, including this new and incomparable resonance suppression pickup arm, is my current reference system. Now, ones and zeros were served using a Rune Nucleus Plus, the Arlec Ares G 2.1 streamer, and the superb and overachieving Mola Mola Tembaki DAC, which I have reviewed in print and here on the channel in episode 13. Electronics included the AudioNet PAM G2 Phono stage, reviewed in print and in episode 64, Powered by the Ampere power supply and the AudioNet Humboldt integrated amplifier discussed in the GTT YouTube episode 4, which drove the YG Acoustic Summit loudspeakers in their first ever premiere showing. Power distribution for all the electronics was managed by the Kabbalah Sosna Expander, while cabling was from the Kabbalah Sosna Sensation series. Now, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to understand that the new Peak Series Summit loudspeakers, selling at just $25,000 a pair, were about the least expensive product in this entire setup. And I wasn't the only person in attendance that felt that this pairing took some chutzpah. But damn, this new Summit demonstrated remarkably good balance and was capable of displaying both a teeming degree of texture and exceptional tone color. In fact, playing the 1995 Classic Records reissue of the 1960 RCA Shaded Dog version of Rinsky Korsakov Scheherazade by the CSO under Reiner, they left me really stunned. Uh, this system's ability to recreate accurate staging and realistically sized and placed imaging was more than simply good. It was exceptional, with information extending well outside the placement of the speakers, even from digital sources. While I was there, we also did a head-to-head -head comparison of Dave Brubeck's 1959 classic, Time Out, using both a 16-bit 44 kilohertz digital file and the 2002 Classic Records reissue 200 gram LP. Now, while the acoustic space on the same cut with LP was clearly both deeper and revealed more authentic body, this system's ability to render horns and piano so faithfully made for one remarkable showing. Now, while I found the lowest octave to be just a bit lightish, I was nonetheless almost left slack-jawed at its remarkably good pitch definition from the mid-bass on up into the upper treble. It more than convincingly portrayed the textures and vivid tone color of this full-scale Russian symphonic suite. 
Given the considerably higher system component price disparity to that of the cost of these new Peaks Summit loudspeakers, this showing must be seen as an absolutely triumphant reveal for the YG Acoustic Peaks Summit in particular and the Peaks series of speakers in general. Bravo on a fine new beast from YG Acoustics and to GTT for sharing this remarkable system with us. Coming in at number two, also on the 16th floor, the Astor Presidential Suite was not only one of the best sounding surprises at this event, but was hosted by a bunch of my dear friends and colleagues. First was Michael Vamos of Audio Skies in LA, who was leading the charge. But there was also George Vestanazzi, the keyboard area coordinator and piano performance professor at DePaul University, and a traveling, teaching, and recording pianist, who also recently opened a brick and mortar store Kiyomi Audio in Chicago, as well as Sergei Timichev, the genius behind Stealth Audio Cables. Now, <laughs> interestingly enough, Michael and I and two other colleagues had been in this room sharing some exquisite whiskey and each other's company until the wee hours of Sunday morning. Yet Michael was still willing to meet me for an uninterrupted listening appointment before the show opened Sunday morning. George joined us as well, and the system was, well, sublimely moving. The digital front end was the remarkable three-piece flagship Ideon audio stack from Greece that I had first heard last winter in Rockville and included the Ideon Absolute Stream, which I'll be getting in-house sometime soon to review, the Absolute Time, and the Absolute Epsilon DAC. Electronics were all from JMF Audio of France, which I was not familiar with, uh, including the PRS 1.5 dual mono preamplifier and the HQS 6000 tool dual mono power amp, which used their OC3 power cable. Now, there was also a power line filter, the PCE102, using the JMF Audio PC3 power cable. Loudspeakers were Lawrence Dickey's Vivid Audio Gia G1S, or Spirit, in a bold and beautiful red finish. Now, I reviewed these remarkable speakers for the Absolute Sound just after their introduction back in 2018. Now, all cabling in this room was from Stealth Audio, including the Sakura V17KE interconnects, the Tantalus KE interconnects, the Dream V18T KE loudspeaker cables, and the Dream V18 Uni AC cords. You should know that Sergey has agreed to allow me to explore a number of these newer stealth cables sometime soon. Now, as good as I had expected this system to sound, I was not prepared for the degree of clarity, transparency, and immediacy that I was treated to. The system was exceptionally smooth and natural, and able to convey an amazing sense of the rhythm and timing of the event. Violins sounded so visceral and genuine, offering more than merely gut on string, but revealing the all too often masked sonic contributions of the instrument's own wooden body. Piano was equally excellently represented, dynamic and tonally complex, replete with vivid color. There was a surprisingly visceral sense of the space of these recordings, as well as the body and bloom of the instruments. With one choral piece, a Bach chorale, this system's ability to reveal a greater, more recognizable individuality to each and every separate voice, at the same time allowing for the much more convincing conviction that the massed voices were actually a composite made up of those clearly individual contributions and not some blurred clump of voices, was unnerving. Finally, the system presented an excellent sense of the realistic scaling of musical crescendos. The sonic envelope it created was so convincing and authentic sounding, so expressive and open, that I was left with an almost undeniable sense of thereness. Bloody well done, gentlemen. That brings us to number one, the overall best sounding system at Expona 2022. Wandering into the Euphoria Suite, where I held two LP spin sessions for showgoers, both Friday and Saturday evenings, Keith Sequera and Gordon Waters of the audio company of Marietta, Georgia greeted me, as did Damon Von Schweikert, 
CEO of Von Schweikert Audio, and Leif Swanson, Vice President and Lead Designer of VSA. The room looked and sounded fabulous. The LP playback chain starts again with a Kronos Pro turntable, this time with the original Black Beauty tone arm and the SCPS-1 supercapacitor power supply fitted with a HANA Umami Red MC cartridge. Here, the phono stage was the superlative two-box back statement phono preamplifier. Ones and zeros were regenerated with the unfailingly natural sounding esoteric gear, including the N01XD streamer renderer DAC, the K1 Grandioso CD SACD player, and reclocking was done with the G01 clock. Now, as well as the statement phono stage, the electronics here included the VAC statement line preamplifier and four of the sublimely magical VAC Statement 452 IQ music block amps used to biamplify the newly launched Von Schweikert Ultra 7 loudspeakers. Now, all equipment rested on the versatile Critical Mass Systems Maxim equipment racks, and cabling was all Masterbuilt Ultra series throughout. Now, like the entire Ultra lineup, the new Ultra 7 delivers extremely low distortion, affording a stunning level of clarity, offers superbly realized and uniquely dimensional imaging, staging, and focus, as well as that engaging full-bodied harmonic structure, so effortlessly realized by the entire award-winning series of Ultra loudspeakers. Now, something that makes the Ultra 7 unique is that it is the first and only Ultra speaker that does not employ any internal amplifiers to power its woofers or subwoofers. And while it may be ordered with an internal 525 watt amplifier to power those woofers, as is, the design achieves full range response from 18 Hz to 60 kHz with 94 dB of sensitivity. Now, this system's ability to render such stark transparency to the recordings, to reveal nuance in detail or scale, to uncover minute inflection, to render such a sophisticated degree of musical relevance, all speak to the superb level of resolution and transparency that is a common thread in all the components in play in this system. Bass performance was extended, fast, tight, powerful, yet highly pitch defined. Mid-range was pure with indisputably authentic timbre, full-bodied texture, and rife with an immediacy and intimacy that was infectious. The uppermost frequencies were transparent, detailed, and extended, revealing that final degree of effortlessness, air, and shimmer as naturally as if the system were simply breathing. This system so much more convincingly transports you into the recorded event with its comprehensive and effectually fabricated deception than any other system I experienced at Expona 2022 period. In this room, in terms of creating the illusion of living, breathing musicians populating a real space, of having that inexplicable ability to foster the suspension of disbelief, of permitting me to almost forget that I was listening to a recreation, a total deception, a reconstructed sonic event, this system had no equal at this show. In fact, I explore and address their unprecedented award-winning phenomena in my show report at Enjoy the Music, linked in today's description section. But its ability to deceive, to permit me to forget that the time and space of the recorded events unfolding before me were merely auditory illusions generated by a complex reconstruction engine, a conglomeration of electromechanical devices was, in my experience, unparalleled. This is just one more instance where this team has managed to bring the undeniable magic we all seek to experience from our sound reproduction systems to yet another show. I simply must urge you to go out of your way to hear this remarkable traveling, game-changing sonic experience. While you likely cannot begin to understand the monumental effort it requires in terms of time, manpower, and resources, to accomplish the musical magic that this group of partners consistently deliver to audiences around the world, you will nonetheless revel in the resultant musical experience. 
What they routinely accomplish so much more closely replicates the experience of a live event that it is unnerving. I hope I may be able to share a track or two with you at one of these upcoming events. Thank you for tuning in today. Please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and be sure to post comments or questions, and like and share links to your favorite episodes with your friends or on social media. Information on supporting the channel may be found in today's description section or at my website, theaudioanalyst.com. Please stay safe and keep the music playing. Till next time, cheers.